Hello everybody y'all, welcome back to another video. Today is another episode of reviewing NHL teams offseason so far as today we got the Calgary Flames as they had a pretty quiet offseason but for the fact that they brought in the two-time Stanley Cup champion Blake Coleman and uh, they lost their captain there in Mark Giordano but the team is starting to look like how Daryl Sutter likes it to look but before i get into today's episode i'd like to just say if you are new to the channel make sure to stop that subscribe button and hit that like button as well that'll be very much appreciated so let's get into this puppy here with the calgary flames as you know they had a kind of a quiet off season they didn't do a whole lot i mean they didn't have a whole lot of money but they kind of do it at the exact same time they have 5.3 million dollars going into this uh you know into the season and honestly they did some pretty good moves they picked up blake coleman on uh, you know the contract's nice the term is a bit long kind of like how you know the christopher tanev contract looked but honestly the calgary flames is off season i thought it was okay you know they lost giordano but giordano had a pretty rough season last year he definitely was not himself um definitely not the top two guy you really want to rely on so now he's gone now you picked up nikita zadorov which we're going to begin all into that so let's just jump right into the trades because i think that's you know first things first we got to start talking about the trades so the first one that they made was picking up tyler pitlick uh for a 2022 fourth round pick which i thought this deal was really smart uh by the calgary flames picking up a really solid defensive guy in tyler pitlick uh who played for arizona last year he did formerly have some really good offensive numbers before but he's been mostly you know a third line fourth line guy who brings you really really solid defensive numbers and i think that's what calgary flames were looking for here in tyler pitlick is to improve the depth and that's what Tyler Pitlick will do. Great right-handed guy, could play the center role. I think he'll be a really good player for the Calgary Flames. And then the next big deal that they made was picking up Nikita Zadora for a third-round pick. They got his signing rights, of course, which they signed him to a $3.75 million deal, which we'll get into that a little bit later on. I think it was a bit steep of a contract that they paid for Nikita Zadora. But he, if he played like how he did last year and brought that great defensive defenseman, you know, role that he did in Chicago, because his defensive numbers are insane um he played really well defensively of course he's a stay-at-home defenseman uh, and, and that's probably around the range you're gonna get for a stay-at-home defenseman like in his Nikita Zadorov but it's kind of another defenseman that you know fits the perfect role for Daryl Sutter you know the way that Daryl Sutter likes to build his teams are with very burly defensemen and that's what Nikita Zadorov is a guy who could block shots plays really good defensively and I think will be a decent pickup for the Calgary Flames it's just where will he fit will he fit alongside Erasmus Anderson we'll get into that a little bit later on of where you know Nikita Zadorov will fit because Yusuf Volomaki is also a big question going into next year. Will Volomaki be able to take a next big step up and play in that top four, or will Nikita Zadorov uh, take over that spot? But anyways, um, the last trade that they made was picked up uh, Daniel Vlador, uh, another goalie this year. Um, they traded away David Riddick at uh, trade deadline to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, of course, they needed a backup going into this upcoming season. So, they picked up Vlador, uh, who did all right with the uh, Boston Bruins he played some pretty good games uh you know he definitely doesn't have the most pretty safe percentage in the world but he only played five games he had a really good season there in the AHL and same with the year before I uh, had a 936 save percentage uh and also played really good in the Czech League with a 956 save percentage so um I'd be pretty excited if I was a Flames fan picking up this goalie now there of course there's big questions he's 24 years old is he ready to take a backup role or not that'll be the biggest question going into the next year or will they be playing you know Jacob Markstrom you know 70% of the games like they did last year Jacob Markstrom you know he was all right but he 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 started to show that little bit of the de uh, decline near the end of the season right that was the biggest thing with Jacob Markstrom he played you know a lot of the games he played 43 games at a 904 save percentage he started off the year red hot I remember Jacob Markstrom was red hot to start off the season and then you know midway through the season it seemed like Jacob Markstrom just you know, wasn't able to play as good because he was playing like, what was it like 10, 15 games in a row near the end of the season when they traded away David Riddick because they had no backup. So that's the biggest question. Can Vlador be their question for their backup goalie or is Jacob Markstrom going to have to play 70% of the games going into next year, which I don't think Jacob Markstrom will be able to handle that, especially seeing the way that he handled this year. It'll be a big question, and can Jacob Markstrom stay healthy as well? That'll be also a big question for the Calgary Flames. Uh, but otherwise, I like their moves. Very small, little moves, trade away a few draft picks. 
um, it's not a bad idea. You know, you pick up some good defensive depth in Zadorov. You get another good forward defensive depth there in Pitlick and a decent backup in Vladimir. And all you had to trade away is, you know, fourth and two thirds, which is not that bad. Um, moving on uh, towards the draft, which I thought they had an absolute amazing draft. They got Matthew Coronado, which that's all I need to say. Matthew Coronado absolutely ripped up, uh, the league in the USHL for the, uh, the Chicago Steel. He had 85 points in 51 games. His analytics looking forward towards, you know, his expectancy to be in the NHL is skyrocketing. And I think he could be a really good player moving forward. Um, for the Calgary Flames, he's a right winger. Now, the big problem is, is of course, their center core. That's the biggest thing is they need to start developing their center core. The problem was there wasn't a lot of big named um players at that you know that pick around where they picked Matthew Coronado uh for centers there wasn't I think the next best center was Chaz Lucius and uh you know Winnipeg picked him up later on but Matthew Coronado is going to be a really good winger for the future of the Calgary Flames and especially if you know they do have to end up rebuilding I think Coronado will be a, a, a future great piece moving forward especially if they do need to trade maybe for a Jack Eichel which we've had we have heard rumors about the Flames being in on Jack Eichel, which I think the Flames should be 100% driving everything into getting Jack Eichel. We'll, we'll look at it, you know, a little bit later on on why they should, but having Sean Monaghan and Elias Lindholm and Mikhail Backlund as your center court is definitely not the strongest thing for the Calgary Flames. Their winger court is amazing. Magic Pawnee had a great, amazing season, and he's going to only grow from here. Johnny Goudreau had a good season. Kachuk, you know, you had Blake Coleman. And also now Matthew Coronado for the future. The next big thing is getting that next big center. And Jack Eichel would be that for the Calgary Flames if they were able to. That's that's the biggest thing if they're able to. Um, but anyways, moving on towards the signings here for the Calgary Flames. They didn't lose a whole lot. They did lose Mark Giordano to the expansion draft. But they honestly didn't lose a whole lot. They signed Blake Coleman. For a six-year, $4.9 million deal. Now, Blake Coleman, we'll take a look at his analytics. Now, just before we do, I, I recommend going checking out Jay Fresh. Uh, his Patreon will be in the link in the description below. He produces great analytics like this. And this is Blake Coleman. Uh, he had an 80% war. He was an, an amazing third liner for the, the Tampa Bay Lightning going into the playoffs. Uh, great defensively. He scores a lot of goals. And this is the type of player the Calgary Flames need. The problem is, he's not a center. <laughs> and, and I'm going to bring up that a lot because I think the Calgary Flames could be a great team if they had that first line center. If, for example, you know, if they had Connor McDavid as their number one centerman, I could probably imagine the Calgary Flames going pretty deep into the playoffs. The only thing they need to improve upon is their defense score, and they would be a really, really strong team. Otherwise, Zadorov, this was a bit of a steep contract. I was thinking maybe two to three million dollars for, you know, Zadorov. Um, Great stay-at-home defenseman, but that's all he really does, is he's a great stay-at-home defenseman. And if, you know, it's a big question with him. Zdorov, is he going to stay next year? What is he going to do? It's only a one-year deal. I think it was a bit of an overpayment, um, but a great stay-at-home defenseman at that. Bolamaki, I thought this deal was really smart. $1.5 million for the next two years. And if he explodes going into next year, you only have to worry about this guy paying him $1.5 million. Uh, this is a great future piece for the Calgary Flames, but they need Volamaki to step up big time next year. That that that's the biggest thing. Volamaki had a decent year. He was kind of not really given the best, you know, line mates either. He was playing alongside of Nikita Nestorov and stuff like that, so he wasn't given the best line mates. But this is a big year for Volamaki going into next year. He needs to take that next big step up as a defenseman. His defensive game went a little bit down this year. But I think if he's playing alongside of a guy like a Zadorov or you know a guy like uh, uh, Connor Mackey, I, I I feel like he'll you know, he'll bounce back quite nice. But Volamaki, he needs to have a big year because with Mark Giordano not there, they're going to be relying a lot on a Volamaki or even a, a Nikita Zadorov. Uh, their other picks, they got of course Trevor Lewis uh, for one year deal. I thought this was a real nice uh, defensive depth move uh, for their forward core. Um, he'll probably most likely be playing on the fourth line, probably over Brett Ritchie. Um, I would like to see him be playing over Brett Ritchie, but a, a nice defensive depth guy uh, for their forward core. Um, he played really good in the Winnipeg Jets. He's not going to be a guy that puts you, you know, a ton of goals or a ton of points. He's just going to be a guy that, you know, plays on your PK, uh, brings a nice defensive game to your team, and, and that's what he'll do best. So, 
Uh, let's take a look at the depth charts, and this is their team going into next year, and this is what I was meaning. Their center core is really weak. Monaghan, first of all, had a really down year last year, and can he bounce back? That's the biggest question. Can Monaghan bounce back next year? Majapani was absolutely nuts for the World Championships, and I think as Flames fans, you guys should be really excited about this guy. Majapani was a steal, and he just keeps getting better every single season. He's a great, phenomenal two-way guy. His contract's a steal, and if he keeps going the way that he's going, he's going to be a tremendous piece for this team. Now, the biggest problem is, is their center core. You know, Backlund had a decent year, but they've been having problems finding that first-line guy. Lindholm is not that first-line centerman. Monaghan is not your first-line centerman, and Backlund is not your first line centerman. You know, Monaghan, he's been going downhill for the past few years now. He hasn't been looking that great ever since he put up, what was that, that 70-point season? He's been going downhill. Uh, Elias Lindholm, he's a great defensive guy. He puts up points, but the biggest problem is he's not really a center. He's mostly a winger. And uh, I think the main focus was for this team was to pick up a center, but there was no centermans available uh, in this past free agency. There wasn't really any available unless you want to Joe Thornton or Eric Stahl. So moving forward, I think you've got to go out there and trade for a centerman. And uh, the way that this, you know, this Calgary Flames team is looking is they want to push towards that uh, the the playoffs this year, which most likely they will make it in. Uh, their defense core leaves also some big question marks. You know, last year they were all right. The Tanev Hannafin pairing was really damn good. Tanev stayed healthy, which, you know, I didn't think he was going to be staying healthy throughout the year, which he did. And he played really, really well alongside Noah Hannafin. So going into next year, that will most likely be their top pairing. Just can they be their top pairing will be the biggest question. Um, Rasmus Anderson also had a down year. Will he bounce back going into next year? And he's going to be probably playing alongside of a new defensive partner, either in Balamaki or Nikita Zadorov or Connor Mackey, whoever plays up in that top four. So there's a lot of big questions on who will be the next guy stepping into that top four. Will it be Balamaki? Will it be Zadorov? Or will it be Mackey? Probably not Mackey, but either Zadorov or Balamaki. And also, how well will Vladder play as their backup going into next year? So, lots of big questions. I could probably see this team being a playoff team this year, but they got a lot of big questions. They need to start figuring out what they're going to do for that center core or maybe have Monaghan bounce back, but asking him for that is... I, I don't even know if that's really possible right now. Um, otherwise, I, I, I don't mind this Calgary Flames team. Looking at it this year... Um, I'm a little bit more hopeful about it, especially with the Daryl Sutter. I think he's built the team that he kind of wants um, with picking up Pitlick, with picking up Lewis and picking up Zadorov and also getting Coleman. That's the type of player that they would like. They over, you know, not overpaid him, but the term is a bit long. I would have probably liked to see, you know, four years, but now you paid him. What was it? Six years. That's going to take him until 35 years old, man. That is pretty old for a guy that plays a type of pace of a game that is very grindy very fast pace um it could end up being where he could get injured later on down the line as well but Blake Coleman is a guy that could put you 20 25 goals in the first three four years of his career and it, 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 you kind of look at Blake Coleman as a uh, Zach Hyman sort of player uh, a player that you know got paid uh, a lot in, in terms so you know they could lower down the cap hit but that might hurt them later on down the years. It'll help them right now. I think Blake Coleman will be a tremendous guy that helps this guy, uh, helps this team out, especially depth-wise going into the next year. Because if you're having Blake Coleman on that third line, which most likely will be, because I don't see Majapani playing on the third line. But if you have him playing alongside of uh, Backlund and Pitlick, that makes you a really good defensive third line going into next year. And a decent fourth line there with Lucic, Froze, and also Trevor Lewis most likely playing, or a Glenn Gowden. So the depth is looking a lot better than what it did last year. That That's the biggest thing. The depth is looking a lot better than last year. Just their biggest question is their center core. And uh, their center core will dictate how far they go, basically. And also how well will Volomaki or Zadorov jump up as well, I think will be their, their biggest question. Uh, for this team, I think I'm going to give them a B once again. Um, just uh, exactly how I did last year. I think I gave him like a B minus B last year. Uh, this year I'm going to give him a B once again. The Zadorov move was I, uh, Volomaki was a really good signing. Coleman, good cap it, uh, just really long on the term. Good draft, good trades. 
I give them no what I'm gonna give them a B plus this year. I thought they did really good on their offseason. Uh getting Matthew Coronado was a really good pickup. Magapani's only gonna develop from here. Coleman's a nice pickup. I thought they did all right. They just need better centermans, and I think that's the biggest thing moving forward, as my webcam sadly died. Hey guys, post editing me. Uh, just a few minutes ago, the Calgary Flames announced that they signed Dylan Dubé to a three-year, $2.3 million deal. I gotta say, I, I love this deal for the Calgary Flames. Dylan Dubé has been a player that's been slowly improving over the past few years. He put up 22 points uh, in 51 games. It's a really solid third liner for the Calgary Flames, and it could, if he could continues to improve like how he is I think this contract could be an absolute steal either he's going to be a phenomenal third line guy or he could be a tweener second line guy but this is a really good contract for a really good young player in Dylan Dubé and I absolutely love it I think I'm still going to stick towards a B plus because the fact that you know there's a door of contract and you know a little bit long on the turn for Coleman but honestly I thought this deal was really good for Dylan Dubé three years for a nice young guy at a really nice cheap AAV perfect deal for the Calgary Flames but uh, I'm gonna end the video here guys tell me guys in the comment section below how you guys thought of the Calgary Flames offseason and I'll see you guys all later adios amigos